So thanks, Helen. Thanks for your introduction. My name is Karen Zhou. I am currently a graduate student at Rice University. Today, I'm going to briefly introduce you how we can use HPC Toolkit to analyze GPU accelerated applications. So without further ado, let's get started. So since uh, the time left for today's talk is just an hour, we have to finish two talks. I will speed that it up a little bit. So today's outline is like this. At first, I will just review the whole workflow for using HVC Toolkit to profile GPU applications. Then I'll show you a few live demos where the, uh, a few tutorial examples I'll go through the profiling steps. Uh, next, I'm going to demonstrate how HVC Toolkit can benefit GPU accelerated applications by two real case studies where two applications collaborated with local teams at NERSC. In the end, I'm going to summarize HPC Toolkit and point out a few caveats when you're using HPC Toolkit. So as John said, HPC Toolkit is a tool that supports calling context sensitive profiling for GPU accelerated applications. On the CPU side, we unwind call stacks. And for GPU APIs, we unwind at each GPU API call. For GPU calling context, we don't unwind at runtime since we don't actually have an API and we don't actually instrument GPU binaries. So we reconstruct GPU calling context offline by analyzing GPU functions call graphs. HPC Toolkit offers two kinds of views. The first view is a trace view, which we, which we can see a series of events that happen over time on each process, thread, and GPU streams. In HPC Toolkit's provide view, you can see a correlation of GPU performance metrics with four program contexts that span both CPU and GPUs. So um, we rec to use HVC Toolkit, for now we recommend you compile your application with CUDA version less than CUDA 11.2, since we don't have force support for interpreting the line information in CUDA 11.2. Uh, any version greater than CUDA 11 is highly recommended. On Core, you can load the CGPU module and load HVC Toolkit. On Summit, you can just uh, by load the by default HVC Toolkit module. So here's the workflow of HVC Toolkit use, uh, when you are using it to profile GPU applications. At the start, we can compile your, uh, our applications with dash G to generate line information. On the target side, if you are using a NVIDIA GPU, you probably also want to pass dash line info to ensure that the line info for the GPU binaries are also compiled in. Next, after the application is compiled, we got some optimized binaries and executables. We can use HPC run to collect call path profiles of events of interest. So here are some tips for using HPC run. It can be used to measure both CPU and GPU activities. To enable GPU profiling, you can use dash E GPU equals whatever the vendor name. Uh, for Intel GPUs, currently the support uh, it's a little bit complicated. You need to point out the program environment you were using, like OpenCL or Level Zero. But for NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, you can just pass uh, their GPU names. To enable GPU tracing, uh, in addition to GPU equals NVIDIA, you also pass dash T to a HPC run. For PC sampling, which is currently available on NVIDIA GPUs only, you can use dash E GPU equals to NVIDIA comma PC. So as a caveat, you need to pass dash T for the current installations on Summit and Cori to uh, set step one weird problem in HVC prop, but we shouldn't do that and we will fix that in our next release. If you want to see both CPU and GPU profiling results, then you pass both CPU and GPU events. For example, if you want to see the real-time event, you pass dash E along with dash, uh, dash E in real-time along with dash E GPU and equals NVIDIA. So to use HPC run with job launchers like JS run or S run, you can just pass uh, these job launchers command as a prefix to HPC run. So at runtime, by default, HPC toolkit will dump the measurement data to something like HPC toolkit uh, dash application name dash uh, measurement something. If you want to specify your own output directory, you can use the dash O option. So uh, in addition to GPU events, we actually support hundreds of CPU events, including some PEPI and PERF events. To look up all the support events, you can use that uh, HPC run dash capitalized L. 
Next, after getting the measurement data and dumping GPU binaries, we will use AFC struct to recover program structures about lines, loops, and inline functions. So if you want to analyze a plain CPU binary, you just pass the executable to HPC struct. If you want to analyze all GPU binaries, which are dumped at runtime in the measurement directory, you use HPC struct and plus the measurement directory. Uh, in addition, if you want to recover GPU control flow graphs so that you can get loop structures and device calling contacts, uh, you pass dash dash GPU CFG, yes to HPC struct. By default, we don't recover control flow graphs as it due to a limitation of NV. This ASM, it, took, it will take long time for large GPU binaries. To accelerate HPC struct, you can use dash J to control the number of threads. There's another, also another knob to control the parison level. So let's say you want to uh, use HPC struct, analyze a GPU binary in parallel, you can point out the lower bound size which is set to parse this GPU binary in parallel. If you set to uh, zero, then any GPU binary greater than the size greater than zero will be parsed in parallel. Okay, so now we have got the static program structure and the runtime profile data. Next, we want to use HPC prop to combine profiles from multiple threads and correlate metrics to static and dynamic data uh, program structure. HPC prop is relatively simple. You can, so there are not too many options to use HPC prop as a single process to combine performance data. You can just pass dash capitalize S plus the application's data uh, extract and plus the measurement directory. If you want to, uh, by default, we also have a, a default database name. If you want to specify your own database name, you can use the dash O option. So if you want to instead use multiple process to accelerate the uh, HPC process pro processing, you can use our uh, MPI version, which is HPC prop MPI. In the end, after we get the database, we can use HPC viewer to visualize the calling context sensitive GPU and CPU metrics and behaviors over time. So there are several options uh, you can copy the database to your laptop and visualize it there. Or on Cori, you can use the no machine uh, service to visualize it. So next, I will go through a few tutorial examples. Uh, I will first introduce them uh, using the slides I have. That next, I will switch the screen to a terminal and show how we can get these examples and how we can derive important uh, performance bottlenecks. So before diving into detailed examples, I'm gonna show you a few important GPU metrics that may be of interest to you guys. So the, the, we, first of all, we have a overall performance metrics called GPU operations, which denotes the total amount of GPU times spent on GPU kernels and memory operations. If you want to look into the details of the time spent on GPUs, you can look up kernel time and the memory time individually. Also, we ha also have other metrics in addition to time related metrics. For example, for GPU kernel metrics, you, we have GPU uh, blocks, which denotes the number of blocks used by each kernel. Also, GPU count indicates how many times this kernel has been launched in your execution. For GPU mem copy uh, 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 metrics, we have uh, host to device number of bytes and device to host number of bytes. There are also other metrics available in HPC Viewer. Next, if you uh, turn on PC sampling and get fine grain measurement data, we also have GPU instruction metrics. Uh, here are some important GPU instruction metrics. The first one is the instruction, which is the total number of instructions collected um, at this frame, which could be a line, a loop, or a device function. There's also store any metrics, which denotes the total number of stored instruction samples at this frame. We also have detailed store reasons for every frame. For example, store GMAM indicates the total number of stored instruction samples waiting for the results from global memory. Okay, uh, we offered four examples in our tutorial repository 
I will introduce you three of them. First, for the Lagos example, you can just follow uh, our instructions to profile it. There are a few caveats when you when you want to uh, profile it step by step using HVC run, HVC struct, and HVC prop. So in when you are using HVC struct, you may want to specify dash J to enable parism analysis for uh, a lot of GPU binaries. In HVC viewer, we can use the bottom-up view to check out the kernel and the memory copy hotspots. In the top-down view, we can climb, click the flame button to view the full calling context of a hotspot to compile it. Com to compile HVC toolkit with NSAID system, HVC toolkit performs both profiling and tracing, while inside system only does tracing on the GPU side. For the Quicksilver example, uh, we would like to turn on um, PC sampling to collect PC sampling data, because uh, for this example, there's actually just a single kernel launched several times, but this kernel is quite large. It invokes many device functions. So in HVC struct, you want to turn on GPU CFG analysis to reconstruct calling contacts for GPU device functions and loop, loop nests. In HVC viewer, we can use it to, visual, to see detailed store reasons at each line. Compare with inside system, HVC toolkit does not replay GPU kernels, so it can profile a Quicksilver uh, in, a light, in a lightning speed. HVC toolkit also recovers loops and reconstruct approximate calling context trees on GPUs, which is something inside computer doesn't. For the PLAC example, we want to turn on both CPU and GPU profiling to check out the trees view. In HPC viewer, you can, we can use the a filter functionality to hide the background CPU threads. We can zoom in to focus on the important GPU activities. We can also use procedure color map to highlight GPU synchronization events. Okay, uh, so in the next, I'm gonna switch to the terminal window. All right, it works. So can you see my screen now? Just want to make sure it yes. works. Okay, yes. cool. All right. So after cloning the tutorial example, Here's what you get when you enter this directory. Then you want to CD examples GPU and choose an example. For example, we want to choose Quicksilver. Next, the first thing you want to do is set up some environment variables. You can see source, and since we currently we are on summit, then we choose summit.sh. So it will prompt something like this. You want to set up the project ID so uh, I'm using my own project ID for now. Next, uh, you want to see export again, a uh, source again. Then it says you want to also set up the reservation queue. Since we are currently at day one, we will use HPC toolkit one. Then you are all set. Then check out the make command again. It prompts a few instructions for using this example. So at the first, you can see make build to build this example. And then there are a few options. You can use make, make run to just profile uh, and collect kernel level informations about GPU performance. When you see make run PC, it actually collects PC sampling data. So let's try make run PC. Then this job is, uh, oh, I didn't see that, sorry, okay then all the modules are loaded. So you can see this uh, script is very handy. It actually uh, notify you at every step. Then you can see make run, then this job is launched to the queue. We are not gonna bother waiting for the job to finish. I'm gonna show you a few databases. So this is a database we cracked uh, after profiling Lagos. So in this example, we first switch to the bottom up view. Then in the in this filter uh, button, you can click it, and then you can see hundreds of GPU performance metrics. Of course, we don't want to see check out every metrics. Then you can use the filter to fil filter out whatever the metrics you want. In this case, we probably want to uh, focus on the GPU kernel metrics and the GPU mem copy metrics first. So we choose these metrics and click OK. 
then you can click the kernel column. It will prompt the specific meaning for this matrix. So GKER represents gives you kernel execution second. Then if you click it, it's going to sort it both uh, in the ascending order or descending order. See, now we want to sort them from um, the highest to the lowest. Then on the top frame, it accumulates all the kernels running time. If you click the flame button, it's going to expand this fr frame and show you all the functions you uh, executed. Those Sorry, functions. A, a quick question. What, what is the I and the E for these different oh, kernels? Yeah. The, Sorry for not introducing them. So Alexano actually was supposed to be introduced these metrics before me, but now the order has been changed. I'll just briefly introduce these metrics. So uh, I suffix represents inclusive time and E metrics represents exclusive time. For some metrics like um, the running time, you want to know both the running time at a, like at a loop or at the whole program route for other metrics like the number of registers used in uh, at this line or at this kernel, you probably don't want to see the inclusive metrics. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. So it's basically, is it myself or is it myself plus right. my children? Okay. Correct. Yeah. Like I said, Lexano is going to show you more details about it. Okay. So now that we have seen all these functions sorted by their execution time. If you click one of them, which is the most consuming one, you click the flame button again, it's gonna expand all the car paths so that you can see that this function is actually called via different car paths. And the first one actually consumes the most of time. Other car paths are not that important. Then let's switch back to the top-down view. This is gonna give you more information when you, click, you can click the flame button and you can see that it also shows you the loops on the CPU side, click it again. It's gonna expand it all the way through the GPU function. So this is a GPU function that we are calling. Since it's passing the function as a micro to this kernel, uh, we are not able to show its uh, specific code if you if we only turn on coarse brain profiling, but uh, let's go up a little bit, then you can actually find the function body here. Okay, so in the next, I'm going to switch to the Quicksilver example, which shows you the GPU call, the calling context on the GPU side. So like what we did, we first, we can see there's a GPU instruction matrix, and we can hover our mouth on this button. We can see it represents the number of instructions executed. Then we click the flame button. It expands the whole calling context all the way through a frame on hotspot on the GPU side. You can see that this calling context span on both CPU and GPU, separate, separated by a GPU kernel placeholder. So this hot, for this hotspot, it's actually called in a device function called uh, get reaction cross reaction. Then this function is called at line 41 on the on, in a GPU device function. Then we go up a little bit. This function is called in this microscopic cross section uh, function uh, at line 73. And this call side is located within a loop nest of two levels. Okay, okay. so uh, any quick question? question? A quick question. Uh, like the C++ host code, the device code uh, functions can be unmangled because the names looks like are just all mangled names. Yes, we do have both the mangled name and mangled name. So, uh, but for this name, I don't quite know why it's not demangled. Um, it, it, I think it's because a, a normal mangled function would start with the underscore underscore Z and it's getting confused with the device stub. Sure. Uh, yeah, for more details, we can chat offline. Currently, uh, I don't have any good answer for this. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so in the end, let's switch to Heli C and check out its uh, trees view. So when you see this trace view, you are probably 
uh, wondering what this stuff is doing. Uh, oh, okay. So at first, I will um, first say one thing about our trace field. So currently, we don't collect any metadata information about the GPU uh, stream. So every GPU stream will start with the spread ID 500. So this indicates the first GPU stream, which is the by default non-stream. And then the second uh, row is the first stream, and then goes the uh, third stream. And in total, we have five streams. This, this is changing in HVC toolkit, but not for the current version. So by clicking this green area on the right side, we can see its call stack so that we know that it's actually spending, for this short run, policy is spent long time in, in a initialization kernel. This is, of course, not something we are interested in. So next, we will zoom in to the interested sections by selecting the interesting area. Then this is going to give you more information. Of course, these colors may be a little bit confused here. Something you want to do is to uh, use something called procedure color map so that you can focus on a specific activity activity for example here if you want to focus on the gpu synchronization events you can specify the pattern name and find out its color we want to since we want to highlight it we would use the right color then click ok click ok again then all the synchronization events will be highlighted uh, this is the CPU thread. So if you want to hide it, you can use the filter functionality here. You can unselect this item, then it will, it will be hide automatically in HVC toolkit. So next we can zoom in further into these stream activities and see what this is really doing. If you uh, move the call stack down a, a few more levels, you can see that there are actually consecutive GPU synchronizations and with no meaningful GPU activities in this interval, which means we have redundant synchronizations, which uh, we may, we could optimize in the applications. All right, uh, that's it for the tutorial examples. Okay. Next, oh. Any question? Another question. Uh, is there a way here to see uh, the async launches if they are from the CPU side? Is there a way to map those back to the CPU timeline somehow? Back to the CPU timeline? Well, you do see the call stack on the right side. Oh, okay. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's something very convenient. Thanks for your question. Okay, next I'm going to switch back to our slides. Okay, so we're, we're uh, collaborating with local teams at NERSC. Uh, thanks for their help, we were able to deploy these applications very smoothly on Summit computer. The applications we have started are SuperIU Dist and Strongpack. The SuperIU Dist application is a GPU accelerated sparse direct silver. We tested its PD drive 3D case. We were using a single node on Summit and using a single GPU. So for this case of real application, at first we observed that GPU activities are quite sparse comparing to CPU activities. Usually CPU samples are taken at a low frequency. So if GPUs are, high, uh, are utilized at a high utilization rate, you can actually see these GPU activities on those streams uh, with a, a broad rectangular, but in this case, you actually see many CPU activities, but only see very sparse GPU activities. So it's recommended to increase the GPU workload. The second observation we derive based on our profile view is that this application uh, has spent long time for expensive CPU computations, which could delay work being uploaded to GPU. So based on this uh, profile view, we can see that for the real time metrics, there are several frames that spends long time in this code section. So this, uh, this small code section spends uh, in total 0.9% time, but this CPU only code actually takes about 
uh, one third of the code whole time. If we optimize this code and eliminate these expensive CPU op computations, we actually achieve a speed up for this code region about 1.78x. In the next, we also provide the strong pack application. Strong pack has solvers for both sparse and dense ranked uh, structured linear systems. We test its uh, Helma house uh, case and we were using a summit compute node with four GPUs. At first, based on the trace view, we can see that actually this application has been using GPUs very efficiently as it's been launching frequent Kublas kernels to GPU streams. These uh, GPU activities are overlapped. And in the summary view, oh, so uh, first on the right side, you can see it, every call stack to those Kublas activities. Then in the summary view, we are gonna stack at each time at each time step, we are gonna stack the non-white activities on top of each other. So in the bottom line, if a space is not white, that means the GPU is active. So there's only a small fraction of the space is white, which means GPU is uh, active most of the time. However, when you zoom out this region and uh, see this high level picture, you can actually find some hot, uh, performance bottlenecks. If we uh, click the purple region here on the right side, the call stack point out that we actually spent a long time uh, on CUDA malloc. And after moving the pointer to the left side, there's a similar hotspot here where we spent a long time in CUDA free. These CUDA malloc and the free operations will synchronize the CPU and GPU so that delay the work being offloaded to the GPUs. We reported this issue to strong pack team. They switched their memory allocation to avoid excessive memory allocations and freeze, achieving 1.15x speed up on Summit. All right, and next I will summarize uh, HPC Toolkit's utilities on profiling GPU applications. So in a nutshell, uh, HVC Toolkit is a measurement and analysis tool that measures GPU activities and GPU instruction samples and attribute them to their corresponding calling context. It provides a trace view of how an execution evolves over time and a profile view that associates metrics with a hierarchy of individual lines, loops, and functions. It collects, analyzes, and visualizes profiles within and across nodes. To use HPC Toolkit, first you use HPC Run to dump and perform some measurement data on GPU binaries. Next, you use HPC Struct to analyze GPU and CPU binaries. You, uh, next, we use HPC Prop or HPC Prop MPI to correlate measurement data and program structure. In the end, we use HPC Viewer to visualize its profile view and trace view. Uh, there are a bunch of caveats about using HPC Toolkit. I will not go through everyone, but uh, but for your reference, once you have encountered any questions, you can go back and look up these caveats and see if you can find any troubleshooting guide. Um, I will just uh, focus on the first one. So uh, many people have, have been asking me questions about that. So what's the overhead of HVC run or HVC toolkit? So I will see that HVC runs measurement, measurement time might be dilated if an application has many uh, short-lived kernels due to the cost of call path unwinding and kernel instrumentation, which is done in the concurrent kernel mode. You need to consider this slowdown when assessing how active a GPU is uh, using profile or traces. So for example, without profiling, if your application runs for one second and GPU time takes about 0.5 seconds, you sh should consider the space for improvement as uh, 50% because when we are profiling this application, the total time might be dilated to two seconds in the worst case. This is not a problem, only affects HPC toolkit. If you turn on call path unwinding or uh, other expensive events in inside system, it also has similar costs. Also, so for the current versions installed on Cori and Summit, we measure GPU kernels with a copy activity that serializes kernels. This problem is fixed in another branch if you want to actually uh, traces these activities with concurrent kernel uh, execution. You can uh, ping, ping, ping me and I will probably point you the HPC toolkit installation path that I have on Summit. 
next, uh, HVC, I would like to uh, address that our control flow analysis for large GPU uh, bandwidths are quite ex expensive. And we do we do not show metadata as you should, as you have seen in our profile view. There are a few more caveats, but uh, today uh, I will not have time to go through every details. So our tutorial example is available on GitHub to use it. First, you will clone this repository and then choose an example. Once you are on a logging node, you first set up the, these two environment variables, like what I did. Then for each example on the logging node, you first source the platform script, then you see make build to build this example. Then next for you see make run or make run PC to collect the measurement data you would like. Then you will copy this database to your laptop or visualize it on the logging node. All right, so that's it for my talk. I'm open to any question. Thank you, Karen. So I'm, I'm looking at just running the Quicksilver example and I did the make run. And after I did that, it just said submitting job. And so now what? Now you will be waiting for the job to be finished. If there are uh, like many people submitting job at the same time, you'll be waiting for like long time. Uh, but I have tested it if the if the summit's job queue is right oh, I'm, I'm on Corey, by the way. I'm not on Summit. Oh, Corey GPU. Yeah. I can answer this question. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so on Corey, everything is done on the compute node. So make build and make run, they both run on the compute nodes. And they yes. are, you're actually submitting two separate jobs. Right. You will have to wait until make build finish before you mm -hmm. submit make run. With the reservation, everything is um, instant. But outside the reservation, you have to wait after build is finished yeah. and then make run. So um, I, I, another way to do that is you could do I'm an S alloc outside the reservation and you can watch build and run. It's just that we are limiting ourselves to not to do S alloc that you to during the reservation windows because um, there are too many people. How do I know whether it ran or not? It just says submitted batch job. Do I mean, um, SQ or something? SQS. Yeah. Yes. Uh, SQS. Dash SQS, S one word. Oh, SQS. Uh, I, 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 SQ is a command, but then SQS, oh, three letters. Three letters. SQS. SQS. It's, oh, an, just it's SQS. just a nurse wrapper, but it's okay. uh, for SQ. SQ. Okay, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. and that says there's no jobs running. So that must mean it finished, but it didn't let me know about it. Um, yeah, you can either check that or add to your batch script some kind of a notification with email or something. Okay, so I did make build, I did, and so if I do, if I, I did make run also, and so it's done, like in yeah. some- Yeah, if make, make, after make run, it's finished, you can make view. Okay, and, and then, be, oh, you, 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 you skip make analyze, you don't need to do that one? It's part of it in the G, on the GPU side. The make run does make analyze as part right. of it. Oh, right. okay. On the it was side, you do need to do make analyze separately. Yes. Got it. Okay, I see that. Yeah. Okay. So I okay, so I just logged on to so I'm going so I did that all in a command line. So now I'm on the other system, the the what is it, no machine? Yeah, right. NX, right. So if I go back into that folder, I should just be able to do make view. Is that correct? Make view. Yes. You probably need to set up uh, if it's the separate yeah. terminal, you need to just uh, source set up uh, PE again. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. Yep. And that should work. <laughs>